Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Summer Market. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're really excited today to have so many wonderful um, sessions and different local um, artisans and businesses joining us here today to celebrate a summer that, again, kind of looks a little bit different, but we're, I think we're making the best of what we have. And it's an opportunity to explore our city, um, which is Ottawa, and, and kind of bring to life all the different things that are happening here this summer and through the coming months ahead. So I'm Sophia Boris. I'm the events manager here at the college. And the events team has put on the, the summer market with a bunch of different vendors. And today we have Runaway Picnic with Joanna Abazina. And she is about to turn a space into like this beautiful destination. And if anyone knows me at the college, we know this is this really excites me. So anything with creative design and outdoor space and, and some dining experiences, uh, count me in. So, but before we begin, I just want to go over just a couple of housekeeping um, items. Um, so there's obviously lots of uh, things going on today. So Anthony will put in the chat all the different vendors that are happening in the session times. So feel free to tune in throughout the day. That works with your schedule. We have um, live captioning happening. So if you require that um, tool, if you can press the CC icon at the bottom of your toolbar, and that will be available for you as well. So. As uh, Joanna speaks, um, she's going to have a quick presentation. Again, if you know from last year, the summer market, it's quite relaxed. So feel free to take some notes, ask some questions in the chat. Um, and then there'll be kind of more of a formal Q&A happening um, after that she has her presentation. So let me give you a little bit of background about who Joanna is. Um, and this is just a, a kind of a huge business venture as it is the first one ever um, to be at the first luxury pop-up picnic business. So as we were used to before is like going out for dinner and like having experiences outside of our home. This is a real cool opportunity to bring something of an experience um, with close friends and colleagues and family members to celebrate something more intimate um, and kind of designed with your style. And also a fun fact is that Joanna is also an alumni. So again, Algonquin College, um, just you know, breathing their best into the into the entrepreneurial world. And um, she's also a, an award-winning interior architect, which is really cool. And actually working on uh, the new building, the Arc at um, at the college as well. So lots of amazing um, credit to Yolanda, and we're very excited to have you. So. Without further ado, we would love to introduce you and take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with everyone here and just introduce Runaway Picnic. So my name is Joanna Mazena, and I am an interior designer and also the owner of Runaway Picnic. I launched Runaway Picnic in the pandemic as a result to like get back to bringing some joy to the city and having something fun to do while you're in this lockdown state. So um, Runaway Picnic was launched last year and we've been doing intimate luxury picnics around the city, anywhere you want, could be a beach, could be in the middle of the forest or in the park. And uh, we've done picnics on, uh, with, like a pic with a dining setup style or like a relaxed lounge style. And today we're gonna show you um, something that you can do in your own garden or even in your house if you want to style up a picnic table or if you want to style up your just dinner table and just keep it up a notch. So today we're going to show you something more of like an easy spring setup piece. So um, what I have here today is just like a regular picnic table um, that you have at home or like uh, anything in the garden. This could be even your dinner table as well. And I also have some tulips here so that these would be more of like a centerpiece. And these, like, you can bring any kind of flowers just to dress it up um, table. And then I have some uh, candles with the candle supporters. So usually I'd like to create some kind of an interest in the table and uh, create some kind of a depth instead of just having like your uh, regular plates and napkins. So um, we're going to first start with just putting in some candles here, even though it's a bit sunny. But like usually when it's about dinner time, it's dark, right? So we're just gonna show you the different scenarios that you can have right here. And then you gotta be careful, sometimes these things fall, so you have to like truly anchor them and make sure they're quite stable. Um, so first, yeah, you would have to have linen on the table just to dress up the table a little bit, some centerpieces, roses, candles, anything that would accentuate the table for you. 
and then um, what else we would need is basically to fit the, uh, the plates, right? So first you would go with some place mats. I like to use something that's more with texture. So like having some woven place mats, anything that you can find. Um, you can even use charger plates if you have any. So um, here we're just doing a table for four people. And making it look a little bit more fancy. And then you go with the plates. So I like to have some interest with the plates and have some color and variety. Um, it's nice to have like different patterns and you can mix it at home. Something that's more original, especially like at the dinner table, you wanna make sure that your plates do speak. So here we're just doing a contest with two different colors, the dark charcoal and white. First, and then the side plate on top. Now, when you're outdoors on a picnic, you gotta make sure that it's okay if you see flies around or you see some trees, like this is normal. Um, and then, Then it's time for putting glassware. So for the glassware, you can put whatever kind of wine glasses you want, if you're entertaining or if you're just having water. Usually on my picnic tables, I leave enough room so that there's enough uh, space in the center of the table for the food, like the charcuterie or like uh, barbecue, whatever you're having for dinner. But if you're having like a plated menu, um, like say you have a host and she's uh, serving the food on the table, so on the plates themselves, like kind of like a dinner style um, fine dining, then you don't really need to put anything in the center piece. It's just on the plate. Um, now we're going to go with the platters. So what we go with first is we try to have Try to put the basics first, the, the forks and the knives first. And it really depends on like what you're serving for the dinner or the picnic, I'd say. So I would start with the large fork knife and then the, sorry, the large fork knife, uh, the fork and the knife. So basically you would put the fork on the left, the knife on the right. Um, it really depends on like the eating styles. Usually that's how it's done. Um, but if you're more left-handed, you can switch things up. And then, so I'll just do the other side quickly. So as you can see, the more items you add, the more items you add, the more texture you have, it will be better. Um, just because you want to really create that fancy vibe to the, to the table and you want to dress it up. So then you would go with your smaller fork, the one that you use for your salad or um, whatever small plate appetizer that you want. And you would put that next to the other fork. So large fork first, small fork second. And then you would put your, put your spoon. So the spoon is next to the knife. The spoon is next to the knife. The smallest spoon is at the top. This is great for like if you want to have a full scale um, dinner. So it has like appetizers, salads, you want. Today we're not featuring any kind of soup, so you all need to have a soup bowl, but it's up to you. I mean, it's kind of hot, like you don't need any soup. <laughs> Joanna, as you're setting the table, can you share for you to have any other table? 
we're going to share some of your photos, Joanna, as you're setting the table, because I think it's really neat for everyone to see the different styles that they can book while um, they, you know, they book with you for your business. So Anthony, can you share some of those photos that we as we bring this table to life? Yeah, so these are just go to the yeah, so what you're seeing are some of the picnics that we've done in the past. And uh, this is more of like what Runway Picnic is about. We try to really create custom experiences, focus on the detail, the quality of food, the quality of the experience itself. So as you can see, this was a picnic that was done where the client wanted some barbecues and large charcuterie boards. So like everything can be customized and uh, the design details is always on top notch with our work. So our picnics usually come with a dining table and then it comes with cushions, linen, carpet, and then we also have floral centerpieces and candles in addition to other items that may be required. It looks amazing. How many people often um, do they have at the, at the table? So what, what's usually the, the average guest count? So usually we offer our picnics from two to eight. Now we can accommodate 12 people, not because the COVID restriction is a bit more loose. This was actually a birthday picnic that we set up in a forest. And uh, it was quite special for the birthday guest because uh, it, the guest was a male. And usually you have picnics that are too feminine, right? So it was a nice uh, challenge to design something that would uh, suit the male preference, if you might say. And I think it was a success. We've done a lot of surprise picnics for husbands and boyfriends and even uh, siblings. So it's really, picnics are not just for girls, honestly. They're for everyone and any age as well. So what I'm showing here on the table right now is that we also need to think about linen. So having quality cotton linen is very important instead of just using the polyester ones because cotton has more absorption and it feels better than the polyester ones. So I think the last step would be on this table is to just add the linen. So there are tons of ways that you can like um, play around with the linen, the napkins. So like you can put them, you can fold them as a square and then you can put the, the cutlery on top and just put it on the side of the table. Or you could do what I like to do is I like to put it on the face itself just because it gives a more fancy um, vibe to it. And also because when I do my picnics, I do a menu. So I usually put the menu on top of the, the, top of the small face because um, it just feels more organized. And usually my tables are very busy with food and items. So the more that you can have on, on the table, the better because it adds more to that luxurious vibe that you're aiming for. And you really want to wow your guests, right? In your whole party. So the more lavish, the better. And sometimes simplicity is still beautiful. Like this one is pretty simple. It's just a table runner with the centerpiece and then a few candles here to add some vibe. And, uh, for this setting, usually you would have someone come in and just pour the food on the table. So you might have bartender or the host would come in just to get the food. Or you might have a buffet and you just pick up the food and put it by yourself. So tons of options for a garden trip. You wonder what's the most unique location that you've hosted this style of table at? I think the most unique location, huh? I mean, a lot of our locations are pretty unique. We try to find very interesting um, locations, like private, not too, um, not too public. But uh, one of the ones that truly stuck with me over the past few, past year was when we set up in a, I think it was an orchid uh, conservatory and there was like a forest trail. And that was one of our first picnics. So our client wanted to do a surprise 50th birthday for her father. And it was at the beginning of the pandemic. So obviously you can't go to restaurants. There's nothing out there for you to do. And we literally transformed the forest into something straight out of Disney. Um, it's actually pretty nice. We have a picture of it on our website. When you go to the package page, it's with the hexagonal picnic table. So we also do set up picnics on existing picnic tables as well, if we're like deep in the woods. 
So that's also an option for those who prefer not to sit on the floor or want some elevated seating or who want to try something different. Very cool. And we have a question in the chat, which I think is interesting. Um, they've, they've heard that design, um, there's something called, in design, there's something called the principle of threes, where you group things together um, in threes. So does that apply to a tablescape as well? I think anything could be applied. Yes, like all of these design principles that we're being taught at school, it does uh, definitely help you with, uh, with doing a table. I mean, when you're studying interior design, it really has nothing to do with tablescaping, but the same principles that you study do apply like you always want to make sure that you might have some kind of balance whether it's asymmetrical or symmetrical rule of thirds maybe like you want um if you want to center things on a specific corner and just keep a balance between that i mean having the rule of third doesn't really um it might be a bit challenging when you're doing a tablescaping just because the more focus is usually towards the center of the table since a lot of people gravitate towards the center so um, there are different ways for you to think about how you can apply the design principles in picnic setting or like even this table setting in general. Very cool. It, oftentimes people think putting a table together is just like, you know, putting some dishes on a table, but there really is intention and thought that are put into it to create this like atmosphere and this experience. Yeah. Let me show you how the table looks like from the top. Awesome. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to you know, raise your hand, put it in the chat. Oh, that looks so cool. This is how the table looks like. Yeah, it's a very simple, easy to do table setting. Um, obviously, with Runway Picnic, we do much more elaborate setups, but I think this is good for people who want to try something cool at home. Here you go. And experience something that's a bit more elevated change those uh, summer parties at home, okay? Very cool, I love it. Yeah. And do you have, there's a question here that says, do you have any advice for anyone, someone who's graduating or who is interested in events and design, how to get into the industry? So I think you just really need to have a very cool idea, um, kind of like what I did. I never had any kind of experience with the events industry prior to coming in here so I was like a newbie but I had a very strong idea and I like networking with people so I reached out to those who are working in the events industry and pitched them my idea and then I saw people who were very interested in it because it was so unique there's nothing like that in the city and they wanted to join forces so I think having the right attitude and connections is very important you gotta keep networking and making those friendships because the event industry here is very small and everybody knows each other. So it's good to make friends with the right ones and uh, build a very solid foundation. Yeah. Awesome. What I'm seeing here is that because of the whole pandemic and the COVID, I'm realizing that there's a lot of emphasis on intimate events these days. So if you are able to figure out a way that would work with that field, that's better because it's to your advantage. Um, obviously, as things go forward and the COVID restrictions come down and life becomes normal, maybe intimate events won't be as popular as they are right now, or maybe they would be the new trend. You never know. <laughs> I feel like it's um, it's always going to be a hybrid, and I think that works too with the virtual and in-person world, but also having a large scale and intimate event. And I think we've had a glimpse now over the last year of how important intimate events can be and, and the experience that they are, and people are, are really enjoying them. So whether it's you know a party for 50 or party for five, I think you I think you're, you have a great point here is create the same experience. It doesn't matter. You can still have a beautiful space and, and meal and experience together. It doesn't matter what the number is. Yeah, exactly. Like for me, when I started Runway Picnic, the idea was to really connect with your family and your loved ones or your close friends. So this was something that you don't usually see, right? So I wanted to specify on a very social issue because I suffered from it when I was working from home. I felt like there was this disconnection between family and work because like you're working from home 24 seven. So you don't really know the difference between when to cut off work and when to, uh, to enjoy time with your family. And because everything was closed, you don't, you don't really know what to do. So this idea really helped me personally. And then when people saw me do this around town, in the parks for my own personal reasons, they asked me if I was willing to offer this idea as a business. And 
offer it as a public service so that people can look at and experience the, what I'm doing as well. What is the process for booking your services? So now that they've gotten a glimpse of what they can kind of do in, in their backyard or in a forest, how do they go about booking what you do? So they can go to runwaypicnic.com and everything's listed on our website there. So basically they would pick a package, a theme, a location if they have in mind, like they can tell them they want the beach, they want the forest, or if they have a specific location that they secured at the venue then um, I can work with that. Um, and then afterwards they would like uh, send me a list of animals that they would like. So basically the sky is the limit with Runaway Picnic. It's really much like a small intimate event service. So you can have balloons if you want, backdrops, custom cakes, um, food. So you can even have a butler if you want, a violinist, um, live music, painting, workshops. Um, and if you want so it's really um varied and the packages are like customizable so you start at something and then if you have something in mind you just add it up and then you get a complete package at the end of the day so everything's on our website runawaypicnic.com and then if you really want to see more of our work i would suggest i would highly suggest if you follow us on instagram at runaway picnic and facebook because we do post a lot of our work there our website is more like information center slash teaser and where you actually do the booking request. But our Instagram is more the day-to-day -day social life that we do. And we try not to post everything because we want to keep it as a surprise since every picnic is different for each client. We have some themes that you pick from, sure, but every picnic is different. So um, it's always going to be a surprise for whoever's receiving the picnic and who's enjoying it. So I had some clients who already knew like what they were getting. Um, they told me they wanted the exact kind of uh, theme they saw on one runaway picnic image on Instagram. And uh, when they saw it in real life, they were just completely shook with it because it was totally out of the expectation. When you see a picture, it's different when you see it in real life, right? And it's just been an amazing experience so far. Like seeing the people's reactions has been amazing. Yeah. I really like the butler service. I'm on that. <laughs> yeah, the butler service. Yeah, I've got a lot of people being interested in it now that we're going to stage three. <laughs> Maybe we can also work with the events program to get Algonquin students working with us as well. And now it's a full circle. Good idea. I kind of just want to hear from everyone participating today, and we can use the chat um, by doing this. Um, if you want to write down, if there's one location you could host a dinner party, uh, where would it be? So I'll count you down if you can use the chat for you and your friends, one location you want to host a dinner party. And if you can go in the chat in three, two, one. Beach. The beach, of course. You can tell us summer, everyone's like, the beach, the beach. <laughs> It's been very popular lately. Yep, yeah. we've done so many things. Yeah. Yeah. Barn. Barn. Cool. Barn. That's cool. Yeah. Backyard. Oh, a field of flowers. That's neat. Cool. We've done a lot of backyards as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, this gives you some insight of some things maybe you haven't thought about where to host. So that's great. And before we wrap up, um, again, if you have questions, please drop them in the chat. But if there was I always, I like two pieces of advice. One, I always feel like it's a teaser. And there's two pieces of advice that is a must have while entertaining. Um, what would they be? What, what would offer, what advice could you offer everyone watching today as they entertain their guests this summer? I think you, like in terms of like style of what you're doing or- um, Yeah, about creating experience. I think it's really much more about creating something that's, that means something to the people that you're dealing with so like if you're creating a picnic with let's say your immediate family you want to make sure that whatever you're doing works with them um for example like when i started with my family i knew that my family was pretty picky <laughs> with everything so like i had to make sure that no plastics at the beginning like everything has to be high end um and like when i say high end it's like really much like glassware and fine where like what you're seeing right now um, and making sure that the food works with everybody's allergies and bringing something that invigorates them, you know, fresh flowers or bright colors, having some textures just so that it feels more luxurious 
and definitely having linen helps. Like these small tattoos as we're seeing here, let me just show you again. I think these kind of small touches truly transform what you're doing because this used to be like a small barn table that we have here. And then look how pretty it is right now. Like the small touches that you do truly dress up a table and makes it look um, fancy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's great advice. I think I think you're absolutely right. It's the small details, and again, using what you already have and just adding those little luxurious, you know, um, fabrics or elements, and, and it really does bring your space to life. So, if there's something we can walk away with, is obviously we'll book you because I feel like then we can enjoy the party, and I think that's also huge. You know, as a host, you're often running around, and and how nice would it be to have someone come in and do all that setup and just again be able to be present with your guests and entertain I think that's that's huge so thank you for sharing this is amazing. Um, please go to her website check it out if you have any questions, they can reach you via Instagram or the website and yeah thank you very much for joining us we, we really we were so excited to have you and people have been messaging me in the chat that you, you were on the news last night and that, that you're famous now so uh -huh. there you go <laughs> yeah i was on ctv i mean it's it's really amazing how like during the day and during the weekdays like you are working as an interior designer interior architect and then over the weekends you're able to provide some kind of joy to the city with runaway picnic so um, it's completely different fields for me, like having this was just a, as a social project and to spread some joy just because it did something amazing for myself and my family. I felt like the city would deserve something like that as well. So I don't know how it's going to go forward in the future, but I'm excited about the opportunities. It's awesome. And it's wonderful to see our alumni making a difference in the community. So thank you. Thanks, yeah, everybody. My pleasure. Great. So if there's more sessions, please check out the website and enjoy today and, and happy summer market. Thanks. Yeah, everyone. there's one person who's talking about a winter picnic. Oh, oh. we've done that in the snow. Check out our Instagram page. <laughs> you may need some snow pants, but I think that sounds cool. Okay, yeah, thank you, you so do. much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.